You are about to hear another episode of The Deer Slayer, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. Deerslayer and Hurdy Hurdy are making their way to the palace of old Tom Hutter, a stout defense in the middle of a large lake in northern New York. The woods are filled with a band of Iroquois Indians on the warpath. The two white men have almost reached the edge of the lake in safety when they are startled by imitation bird calls, which they recognize as the presence of the enemy. Hurrying to an old hollow basswood, Harry finds a hidden canoe. And the two men push into the placid water just as the cries of their pursuers break out some distance away. The canoe is a hundred yards from the shore before the first arrow touches a bowstring. Luck was with us, Hurry. Or we be prisoners by this time. Judging by their sounds, the Mengwe had cut off every retreat through the woods. Is this the only canoe on the lake? There are two more, but they're hid so no redskin can find them. The devils will have to make a raft if they want to pursue us. What's that I see off there abreast of us? Seems too small for an island and too large for a boat. Well, that's Muskrat Castle where Tom Hutter lives. That's the stationary house you see now. He has another one that floats, sometimes called the Ark, though I don't know why. It must come from the missionaries, Hurry. They say the Ark was once covered with water and that Noah with his children was saved from drowning by building a vessel he called an Ark. Ah, but where do you suppose Hutter is now? Down south, no doubt. Anchored in one of the bays, fishing or trapping. But we'll be at the castle in a minute, and we can wait for him to return. Ah, but this is a wonderful spot, Harry. Who calls himself lawful owner of these glories? None but the king, lad. But he's so far away that his claim will never trouble Tom Hutter, who's likely to keep it as long as his life lasts. He's a squatter, then? <laughs> I call him a floater. Anyway, I envy the man. I envy him. This is a sight to warm the heart. You've only to marry Hetty to inherit the castle. You take Hetty off the old man's hands, and I'll engage you'll give you an interest in every deer you can knock over within five miles of the lake. Ah, now you can get a better view of the castle. It's located safe enough. It's half a mile from where we took the lake and two miles to the furthest point. Why, it's just a regular house almost, built on piles. How deep's the water out here? There's a kind of shoal at this place which made the building easy once old Tom had brought off his logs from the bank. It must have taken him a long time. Why did he build out here, anyway? The old fellow was burnt out three times ashore. Three times between the Indians and the hunters. And in one fray with the Redskins, he lost his only son. No one can attack him here without coming in a boat. And the plunder they'd get would hardly be worth the trouble digging out canoes. And besides... Old Tom is well supplied with firearms and ammunition. I guess you don't overrate the strength of his position from a military view. I notice the sides are made of tree trunks stood up on end. Yes, you're right, Master March. He could stand off an exposed enemy from there with little trouble and less danger. Well, we've arrived, Deerslayer. Pull up here. Old Tom calls this front platform here his dooryard. And the gallants from the fort call it the court. The castle court. Castle court? Yes. Now, what a court can have to do here is more than I can tell, seeing there is no law. Hello, Tom. Anybody go home? I say, Hunter. Yeah, just as I thought. Not a soul here. All off on a voyage of discovery, I guess. Shall we wait here for them to get back? Old Tom has taken to a new con recently. Has been trying his hand at the traps. I guess that's where he's gone, down to the other end of the lake. We better try to find him, I guess, and let him know about true conditions of things in the woods. That is, if he hasn't found out already. We'll probably find him in the south outlet. I could content myself sitting here on this platform, watching the pines paint their pictures on this blue water. 
But I see you're thinking more of the beauties of Judith Hutter than those of this lake. I'll go along with you. So Hutter was burned out three times, you say, by the Mingos. Well, from what the Delawares tell me, I set the Mingui down as thorough miscreants. Aye, you may do that with a safe conscience. Or any other savage you meet. That's not so of all red men, Hurry. I've lived with the Delawares many years. And I know them to be generous and well-meaning people. The Indians are devils as a rule only when imposed on by the white man. Dear Slayer, you'll allow that a Mingo is more than half devil. But you'd persuade me that the Delaware tribe is made up of angels. White is the highest color, and therefore the best man. Black is next, and is put to live in the neighborhood of the white man as tolerable. And red comes last, which shows that those that made him never expected an Indian to be accounted more than half human. God made all three alike, Harry. Alike? Do you call me like oh, an Indian? Oh, you go off at half cock and don't hear me out. God made us all. White, black, and red. He made us in the main much the same in feelings. Though he gave each race its gifts, a white man's gifts are Christianized, while the redskins are more for the wilderness. A white man cannot ambush women and children in war, but a redskin may. It's lawful work for them, but for us it would be grievous and unlawful work. That depends on your enemy. As for scalping a savage, I look upon that pretty much the same as cutting off the ears of wolves for bounty, or stri stripping a bear of its hide. You know the county pays a bounty for a scalp just as it does for wolves' ears and crow's heads? Ah, in a bad business it is, Hurry. In a state of lawful warfare, it's our duty to keep our state of compassionate feelings. But when it comes to scalps, it's a different matter. But it's useless for us to talk of these things. We have our own ideas. Let's keep a good look out for your friend, Tom Hutter. We may pass him if he lies hidden under this bushy shore. I have been looking for him. Is it possible the old chap has dropped down the river? The river? Yes, most of these lakes, you know, have outlets. There's a narrow river off this one, not far to our right. Where's the outlet? I see no opening in the banks of the trees that looks as if uh, it would let a river run through it. It passes between high, steep banks. The pines and basswoods overhang it. I guess we better start over there now. Don't you think uh, we're skirting pretty close to the shore for safety? Ah, uh, it's two miles across to where we first heard the varmints. They'd hardly be all around the lake. Anyway, we'll see the ark before long. Old Tom is up in these bushes somewhere looking at his traps. Listen, Harry. What was that noise on the bank there? It was too heavy for any light treater. Was it the tread of a man, do you think? No, not a man. The tread was too heavy. Push into that log. I'll land and cut off the creature's retreat up to the plank yonder. Be it a mingo or only a muskrat. There you are, dear Slayer. It's a buck. He's coming out of the plank yonder. I'll get him. Hurry. You're a fool. To... Ah, it's a miss, dear Slayer. Hey, but we can catch him before he swims across the neck there. Here, get back in the canoe. I say you're a fool, Hurry, to pull a trigger before we had reconnoitered the shore and made certain that no enemies lurk about. I tell you, the engines are at the far end of the lake from here. More than that, we don't want for food. My name may be Deerslayer, but I never kill an animal lest I need food or a skin. And I still say your shot may be a signal to the enemy. Sure, it'll be a signal to old Tom to put the pot on. Come on, let's hunt up the ark before the sun goes down. Is that the ark, Hurry? Breaking out of that bank of bushes? If my natural learning didn't teach me better, I'd think it a miracle that a boat like that could come right out of the trees. Those trees grow down over the mouth of the river where Hunter has his traps. Hey, ahoy there, Hunter. Let up on your sweep and take a couple of passengers. Hurry. You become more reckless every minute. What with your rifle shooting and your bellowing like a bull, there'll be no earthly chance of dodging the circling redskins. Hello, Hurry. Draw up and we'll give you a hand. When we get aboard that ark, dear Slayer, its stout cabin will protect your carcass. Hey, hello, Tom. Meet Deerslayer here. He carries the best rifle in the woods. Oh, was that his piece we just heard? No, it was mine. It was a bad shot at a buck that got away. Hey, where are the gals, Tom? They're inside taking the kinks out of a mess of tackle. I looked for you last week, hurry. A runner come down to warn all the trappers and hunters that the colony and the Canadas were in trouble again. And I felt lonesome with three scalps to see to and only one pair of hands to protect them. That's reasonable. If I had two such daughters as Judith and Hetty, I'd tell the same story. In general, though, I'm satisfied to have my nearest neighbor 50 miles off. I notice you didn't come into the wilderness alone this time, though. Why should I? Seeing Deerslayer here is a noted hunter among the Delawares. Should we have occasion to defend our traps, he'll be useful. Young man, you're welcome. In such a time, a white face is a friend. 
I count on you as support. Are the savages close by as far as you know? Why, we barely escaped them some hours ago. No man can say how close they might be on us now. Then this ark is in an unfortunate position. I think we'd better get away from the mouth of this river. Uh, I'll pull up these lines and we'll start back to the castle. What's your errand in this quarter, Deerslayer? Tis soon told, Tom. When the news come among the Delawares where I live that wampum and a hatchet were to be sent into the tribe, they wished me to go out among my own people and get the exact state of things. And this I did, and after delivering my talk to the chiefs, I met an officer of the Crown who had money to send to the tribes further west. This was thought a good chance for me and Chingakook, the young chief who's never struck a foe, to go on our first warpath in company. An appointment was made for us to meet at a rock at the foot of this lake. He used to meet me at sunset tomorrow evening. I fell in with Harry here, who was starting for these parts, and we agreed to journey in company. I was in the woods this afternoon, and I found this moccasin in a trail. Maybe they both belong to your friend who's come ahead of his time. Can you tell me if this is Delaware fashion? Let's see. No, that's not Delaware made. Hmm. I should say that the moccasin has a northern look and come from beyond the lakes. If that's the case, you did wrong, Hurry, to fire in wartime without good occasion. Take hold of this sweep and we'll get underway. It's getting dark in this river, Mel, and I'll be glad to get into the light of the lake again. Although I don't think there's Look any... out for that sapling that hangs low in the water just ahead on your right there, Harry. Look there, Tom. In the branches of that beech tree. Up on the second limb. What do you see? Damn it, but your eyes are keen, friend. They're Indians, or my name's not Tom Hunter. And there's six of them. I was right about the moccasin. They're in war paint, Deerslayer. We're trapped. Pull, Harry. Pull for your life as you love Judith Hunter. Pull, man. Pull! 